Hi, welcome to this path planning series. It is going to be really interesting, totally on ROS2 using C++. We will be learning how to write our algorithms, search algorithms, path planning algorithms in ROS2 and visualize them in RWIS. We'll start without using any robot, so everyone can start. It is going to be really simple. So if we talk about path planning, there are certain terms that might confuse you that path planning, motion planning and navigation. Most of the time people think that these three are same but they are totally different. We are only focusing on path planning. In the autonomy stack, the first three steps are localization, then mapping and then path planning. When we have the working robot then. So in localization, you find about the location of the robot in coordinates and map utilizes that localization outcomes and builds a map using a sensor as well. Path planning then builds a path upon the map. Okay, so they are totally interdependent. Path planning requires mapping, mapping requires localization. For the very starting video of this series, we are going to be producing an artificial map using occupancy grid and then we will build upon it and write algorithms for path planning. So let's get started. Just before diving the code, understand this. This is the repository that I have created in which everything I will be developing will be pushed here and it's going to be more descriptive. After the lecture, all the code is going to be uploaded. But how? I am going to create an issue that I need this and you can also create the issue. Just press new issue. For everyone it is currently open, there is no proper template how you can write an issue. Just I'm going to say occupancy grid publishing and that's it. I'm just going to submit this issue. Now it's just sort of a request that I will fill this in this lecture and I will push it. Here is the code of laser publisher and if you have gone through the C++ basic node lecture, this is what we built. We are going to utilize this one in this whole lecture. I am going to be creating multiple packages. The previous one was the node, but now we would be needing another package. And if you don't remember the command, you can go inside of these resources, commands, and I have written some of the commands here. It's a readme file, it becomes very easy for you. It's going to be a C++, so let's go into our ROS2 workspace, source directory, and inside of that, I am creating inside of learners. You don't need to do that because this is the repository I'm keeping everything, so I have to go inside of that directory as well. Pasting the whole command, control shift V, removing it and writing the package name to be navigation the problem might come that there might be some other package as well with the same name but there is not okay in the basic installation so i'm going to just name it to be navigation you have to make sure that you don't overlap it with something else or else you can name it to be navigation underscore pressing enter it creates it inside of this directory which is here you can see in my vs code the next thing we need to do is to create a node i am going to go here nodes source i'm going to copy this one and bring it to my navigation and also there are certain things that i have to do the cmake list and the xml list that we did in c plus plus So basic setup for the CMake list is done. The name of this publisher is going to be Occupancy Grid Publisher. I am going to rename it to be Occupancy Grid OG Pub. Simple OG Pub. Or let me write the full name, it would be more representable. To create an executable, you should be now good with it. Just bring it here and name it properly. If you are not understanding what I am doing, you can refer to the C++ basic node lecture. Okay, now if we take a look in the occupancy grid, let's close the command and laser. So whenever you see a map for autonomy of a robot or any other car, let's say, the first thing that comes into mind, what builds the map? Because obviously map is also something sort of a data. So map utilizes an occupancy grid. And what is an occupancy grid? As the name itself is self-explanatory, it is a grid that shows us what is occupied and what is not. So here, if you can understand that black is occupied, gray is not occupied, bluish or empty space is uh, unexplored. So these are three colors, they have different values. We'll understand them in detail when we will be writing the code. Now to understand which command do I have to use, 
I have to go into resources and commands and to get the information about the message type I'm going to use this command it's written in the resource directory of this repo going to the terminal so I'll paste the command and here in this command I am going to give it the message that I want to look at into there are two options nav messages that we'll be using that provide us multiple options for example the occupancy grid map metadata grid cells and stuff there is another option that you might get confused with nav2 messages okay nav2 is going to be using this type of messages if I press double tap there are other things in nav to messages specifically services are also displayed so nav to messages has a lot of things for now we are not interested in that so let's stick with just nav messages and specifically a message that we are interested in is occupancy grid if I press enter you can see I have a lot of things that I have to fill in like similar to this one in laser that we filled i'm going to fix certain things before filling the data fields of the message i'm going to remove this message and i am going to first start from including the required message type it is nav messages message occupancy grid i'm going to copy it let's bring it this side or let's directly put it here and I don't think so this is going to be the exactly header file and uh, how do I know that because in most of the cases it is not how the name of the file is written so I go to the commands I have also provided the location where all header files are so I'm going to use the terminal and I'm going to go inside of the include and messages that we want to see nav messages and then messages nav messages nav messages messages if i list them the name is occupancy grid the resource commands readme file is really helpful so i knew this was going to be the problem occupancy underscore grid and everything is small otherwise it is going to give an error so this is included okay the next thing when we include it we have to create a publisher and i am going to replace this laser publisher with og publisher which is occupancy grid publisher and obviously the name of the class as well coming to the data type it is not going to be laser scan we have to replace it as well it's going to be nav messages message and this type it is going to be higher case as we have seen here occupancy grid this is confusing for many starters but that's what it is replace everywhere where it is i think this is the point this is the point where the message is created and this is the shade point to point where it is created the laser timer is also going to be replaced with og timer og means occupancy grid okay Now if I bring in the terminal and here we can see we have a lot of things header and stamp inside of it and frame inside of it. If I keep it on this side and I start to fill in the values it is going to take a lot of time but you will understand how the values are actually filled meaning that this message type is of occupancy grid I'm just going to say og message header dot stamp is equal to something og message dot header dot this frame id okay so that's how you fill in the data for the defined message you have i'm going to bring in multiple values here and uh, then we will discuss how they are going to be affecting the whole scenario now here we have all of the values filled except only one if you take a look this is a publisher that is calling this callback function every half a second and it creates this variable message of this data type and it fills in the data that is defined here in ross message type then we publish it okay let's start from this header stamp header stamp keeps track of the time because when you're sending the messages it saves the time and sometime with overloaded messages 
keeping track of time helps out in reaction otherwise if you send 10 commands and they get executed because of any delay after 30 seconds but the problem is if they don't have the time even they receive a new message the new message is again going to be delayed and the system will not understand what is happening because it is going to be executing sequentially if we have the information of time or message received time we can save in critical requirements this is the new message act according to it so we get the time through our rclcpp clock function and you get the updated time the next thing is frame id this is required for the transform the whole information of the occupancy grid is going to be published using this transform i'm just generically naming it the resolution this is an option to increase or decrease the size of the map i think i should set it to one we'll look into it what it is i'll explain these two later coming to this this is just the location of the map where it is going to be placed in rvis as rvis is a simulation in 2d where you want to put it in which position and orientation is filled with this you can see i have emptied everything i'm just providing some rotation here but it is not necessary you can make it empty as well you can try it out so you might be thinking that occupancy grid is simple and it's almost same to other messages yes it is but here's the fun part as it is just a grid you have to define the height and width of the grid then you have to define the values inside of the grid and that matters a lot so what the values are going to be they are just going to be this array if i bring this down you can see i have provided nine different values okay the first one is 100 there is minus one as well and all other are zero they are going to make sense okay the next important field of this message is this height and width this is the grid size currently i'm sending nine values so i'm going to set height and width to be three and three as three cross three matrix is nine values our message is ready we need to compile it and then we need to publish it before compiling or building i'm just going to make sure that all of the requirements are complete as it is using nav messages we have to add another find package dependency and we are utilizing nav messages and as it is going to be building upon nav messages so we have to link that with the executable removing the standard messages as we are not using standard messages so i'm going to remove it just nav messages and rcl cpp if you are not understanding what i'm doing you have to refer to c plus plus node lecture everything seems to be fine let's build it bring the terminal and perform call can build so our package has been built successfully ros2 run navigation and this is the name proper name of our package and double press tab pub occupancy grid if it is not appearing here obviously there is a matter with your cmake list or your include directories so i think i have not showed you that i copy pasted this thing as well to install the target that makes it available for all ros system this specific executable otherwise it is not going to be appearing at this specific point so pub occupancy grid pressing enter but if we take a look at the code the name of the node is minimum publisher the topic on which it is publishing is scan and the map frame id is map frame although everything seems to be wrong this should be occupancy grid custom occupancy grid i think that would be more appropriate custom occupancy grid and i would say occupancy grid publisher and that makes more sense but for the changes i have to perform call can build and run it again so now code is running now we can also add rcl cpp info that once it runs you have to print out that it is running so i can understand the node is running that's a good practice Control shift t for new tab make it big rvis2 press enter in rvis you're going to fix the frame to the frame of your message the message frame header frame id is map frame so i have to write it down if it is not available manually the next thing is it is going to say the node property of data is provided yes it is true no property of data is provided coming to the map the map is available on custom occupancy grid message okay this let me press it and here is our occupancy grid if it is not making sense let me show you so here if we look at the values 100 0, 0, minus 1 these are total nine boxes with a resolution of one 
so every single box is containing one message we can reduce the resolution as well this parameter this field of the message but i have set it to one so first one is 100 as it is rotated you can think of it as it is symmetrical it might be confusing for you to understand is it starting from this black one 100 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 100 or it is starting from it you can make the changes in these position things and you will understand more so that's how you publish your occupancy grid this black one is 100 value that's value is 100 that's why it's black meaning occupied this almost white is zero value that says it's free and this this minus one is unexplored i can make the changes here if i set it to be 100 100 and minus one minus one then let me run the node again i hope it gets updated oh i have to build it call can build and and run this node it is automatically going to build it as well as it is going to run it i hope this gets updated now you can see so it was starting from this point as i think this is origin and i give the value one on the rotation in radian so 0 100 100 meaning these two are occupied this one is zero this zero and minus one minus one zero zero and hundred so at this specific point you can create your own occupied or non-occupied or unexplored map through an occupancy grid publishing message so now you understand how the maps are created at the back end but obviously a strong algorithm is working to continuously or dynamically producing the map let's play with it how we can make changes and how to utilize c plus plus arrays to fill this up if we bring in the terminal and here if i say that show me the interface because i have to get the information about the data array ros2 interface show nav messages messages occupancy grid the data is an integer 8 or signed character array so i am going to fill this up not manually doing it just going to write some code here og array let's name it first i have to define the array as we have experienced in the c lecture most of the arrays are vector arrays in ros2 messages because they are dynamic they have a lot of functionality and that's a good choice for the architect designers std vector and the type is going to be signed care that is an int 8 now, there are multiple names for that signed care and the name of the array is og array and how many entries I think it would be better if we just say 25 or if we give a different number 35 now 35 is something that uh, will represent in a way that width is 5 and height is 7 like 5 rows 7 columns something like that so I'm going to write a for loop that is going to be playing with this array and that's how it is going to fill which is simple if else condition uh, just written in one line that whatever the index is if it is completely divisible by two that gives us zero remainder then you are going to set the value to one otherwise zero it's like one is going to be occupied and the next one is going to be an empty that's how it is going to be so let's publish it uh, we have already written the command for call can build and compile building the node so it has been built let's see the rvis and you can see we have big occupancy grid that we have created one is filled and one is not uh, you can play with it and it is going to be fun this is proper occupancy grid that you can utilize for multiple purposes and it is going to be updated once it's built every odd is going to be now occupied this is occupied the, there are free so now let's push everything if you remember in the start of the video i created an issue and that's issue number two that i will be pushing you can also create issue and write your issues here about whatever you want me to produce a lecture about or it is useful or not so i'm going to just push it here so i'm going to say that this was issue number two occupancy grid node publishing 
so it is going to be committed and when the changes are synced i'm going to go inside my repository ros2 for learners and you can see all of the code the package is now updated and uh, things are added you can openly access this repository it is going to be further developed on upcoming lectures you can propose me your issues they will be listed here so that's how you can generate your own occupancy grid and interestingly in the upcoming navigation lectures we are going to be developing search algorithms in our own custom occupancy grids that we have published it's interesting and there are a lot of algorithms that produce patterns inside of your int 8 array you can utilize a lot of game development algorithms so that's it that was the backbone of 2d mapping specifically so in the next coming lectures you will go through search algorithms the first one would be i think a star and uh, it will build your foundations for navigation so I hope you understood the lecture and you liked it because I loved it when I was creating it. Let's see what's coming next.